Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. It's Random Act of Poetry Day, Tony. Got a poem for us? I'm Tony Kornheiser, I sure do. Roses are red, Mike has the blues, because his team's coach is Matt Eberflus. Yeah. That's good, isn't it? Well, That's you good. know, maybe that doesn't have to be a long-term situation. Really? Maybe. So, so what, are you are you going by the way on Thursday night? No, no, you no. You Bears no, in the nation's no, capital. You're not, not going? doing it. Not doing it. And that the oh, game sort of last surprise. week against Denver left me so despondent. You're lucky I'm really? not still sitting in Soldier Field. Because the I'm sure the Washington owners. Yeah. One of whom you know pretty well. And there's been an invite. No, in not box. going. Uh uh. You're not going to do it. Nope. I'm sort of surprised. We'll see the Bears go down again. Yeah. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, James Harden shows up, Bill Belichick faces another challenge, and Terry Francona officially steps away from managing. But we begin today with the National League playoffs. The Phillies and Diamondbacks won last night. The Phillies beat the Marlins at home 4-1 to one behind Zach Wheeler. The Diamondbacks, after going down 3-0 on the road to Milwaukee, stormed back, beat the Brewers 6-3. Wilbon, which win impressed you more? Tony... Arizona's win impressed me more. Arizona's on the road. Arizona's throwing a rookie out there against a bona fide, you know, Milwaukee Brewers starter who had gone 10 and 8 and pitched enough innings this season and 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 looked to be a solid favorite in a home opening playoff game. Yeah, and they yeah, he had a 3 yeah. nothing lead, gives up the back-to-back home runs and when you're watching this back-to-back, you're like, "Uh-oh. This is not good for the Brewers." And I, you know, I should hate the Brewers because they're a rival of my Cubbies, but I, I, don't, I don't really hate them. I sort of like the way they band together. I like the style of play they have, like Craig Council. But, Tony, I'm giving it to Arizona for battling back in that game, being down 3 nothing. I know Zach Wheeler was good. He had the eight strikeouts. Yeah. He had a lot going on. Yeah. Philadelphia was in the yeah. World Series last year, Tony. Yeah. They're That's supposed right. to defend their home situation, and they did fine. But the Diamondbacks, and you like to go with who's the underdog and the betting line and all that Vegas yeah. junk. The Diamondbacks yeah, had to be underdogs last night. They came back from 3-0 down the road and won that game. Diamondbacks, more impressive. All right. So it comes as no surprise to anyone who watches this show that you would pick Arizona because you have a home in Arizona. Man. And I understand that. And I will concede that that surprised me because I didn't think they would win on the road, especially when no. they went down 0-3. And I will also concede I don't know much about the Arizona players. It's not a division I watch. I watch the Eastern Division. But the guy I talked about yesterday, Corbin Carroll, the rookie, was everything is advertised. He had two hits, including a home run. He had two RBI. He scored two runs. He stole two bases, and he had two walks. Mikey got on base four times, and he was certainly the best Corbin because your boy Corbin Burns, Corbin Burns spit it, the bit. He gave up the back-to-backers. He, he did. Spit the bit. So now I will talk about the Phillies because they come from the road you like to refer to as the land of hopes and dreams, I-95. Well, exactly. Um, hopes and dreams. So they were, you know, they beat a division team, which is harder than people think. You keep playing these teams, you don't pound them. And they beat the Marlins. Their star player... Um, Bryce Harper got into the act, obviously. He ran through a stop sign at third, scored a run. Crowd got very excited. But it was Wheeler. Mike, it was Wheeler. Six and two-thirds. He was good. One earned. No walks. Eight strikeouts. You know what his ERA is in seven postseason Only starts? Only because I read it. Two and it's a half. 2.55. Yeah. So that's, that's total money in the bank. 2.55. Tony, yeah. by the way, there's I mean, one they're, Diamondback they're player you got to know. Evan Longoria. He's been around for sure. 130 around 100 years. years. Made that big He's been play last years. night to start a double Let play. Let me tell you this. Place. The Milwaukee Brewers in your division better hope that the following is true. What? There have only been 12 of these two out of three series. That's only 12. Ten times the team that won the first game won the series. The two times it didn't happen, the team that lost the first game lost at home. So maybe that's what they get. But maybe. they get Zach Gallon pitching on them tonight Zach against Gallen's them for it, Arizona. He's the season. best pitcher Arizona has. Yes, he is. All right. Let's yeah. move to the National Football League and the Patriots, who are likely to be without rookie cornerback Christian Gonzalez for the season due to a torn labrum. This news comes amid a one and three start and after Sunday's benching of starting quarterback Mac Jones. Patriots owner Robert Kraft said before the season that making the playoffs is very important to him. Tony yeah. Bill Belichick is 
17 wins away from tying Don Shula for the all-time record in wins. Could you see Robert Kraft and the Patriots moving on from Coach Bill before he catches Shula? If you're asking me if I think that Robert Kraft would fire Bill Belichick at any yes, point, I'm asking I will you say that. emphatically no. I will Ooh. say emphatically no. Ooh. But if you're asking me if Bill Belichick might just leave of his own accord, I think that's possible. He might want to go to another team at, at, at that no. point. Because his team isn't very good now. And, and when you talk about being 17 away from Shula, he's looking at a five-win team right now. So that's three more years. A lot can happen in three more years. I don't think he's forgotten how to coach, Mike, on no. any level. No. I don't think he has good players. And he picked the players. Those are his groceries, as his former boss, Parcells, used to say. Yeah. Now, I remember, Mike, and you remember as well, when Tom Landry was fired. But that was a new owner came in and there. fired I was there. I was in the building when that. Jerry Jones right. said, get out. That's right. Gave and I, and we both remember space. when Don Shula was forced out. Yeah. But that, again, when, when Huizenga got full control of the team, that was only two years before that happened. Yeah. These guys, Kraft and Belichick, they go back 100 years. I, 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 what I think might happen is this, Mike. Robert Kraft might decide, I want a little bit more input than I've had lately, and that might really chafe Bill Belichick, and he might leave. Tony, it all comes to an end at some point. It's going to come to an end sooner rather than later. Bill Belichick's 71 years old. And it's not going to last forever. I mean, I know that, it, you know, it lasts a long time or even longer time for Greg Popovich, who just signed an extension to sort of get That's Victor right. Wimbanyama avail ready. And he's a couple of years older than Belichick. And he's 75. He's Tony, 75. It, Tony, Popovich. it comes to an end for it's everybody. A number you I know mentioned well. Shula. You know, you, we could talk about Noel. Very few have yep. walked away with just walking away. You know, Red Auerbach walked away. Maybe George Hallis walked away. But, Tony, they, they all see. Pat Riley didn't just walk away. Phil Jackson didn't just walk. There were force outs in some of these situations, or at least situations where they weren't ready to leave. I do see where Kraft could say enough. Because they look yeah. sort of putrid yeah. right now. And Bill Belichick can't yes. stay forever. He's got to have a house somewhere in Nantucket. You put him in a car with a hoodie or two in the back, and you drive him to wherever he wants to go. You know what I think could happen? Why I say he could leave? Why? He could basically pull a Tom Brady. Tom he Brady could. went somewhere else and won. Well, he could pull a Tom gonna, Brady. Uh, so we, oh, who's so going to hire Bill Belichick? Somebody that. will. Yeah. If he if he was a baseball manager, the owner of the Mets would hire him. I James Harden, your boy, in college. has arrived at 76ers training camp in Colorado, and Wilbon, eventually you will tell me why they're training in Colorado. <laughs> but Harden is there, and Coach Nick Nurse said he looked good in today's practice. Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN reported yesterday that Harden's plan is to make things uncomfortable for the 76ers, so uncomfortable that they will trade him. Wilbon, how do you see this playing out? Well, Tony, they got to trade him. And he can be there, and just being there makes it uncomfortable. I don't think Harden is going to outwardly act unprofessional. I would hope not, because, Tony, he's still got to be an attractive candidate for somebody to want to come and get. So James Harden is sort of recruiting. He can say during this period of training camp, if he plays in exhibition games particularly, hey, look at me, I can still get this done. I can still go yeah. out there and, hello, lead the league in assists, which is what James Harden can do because he just did it. So he's got to be an attractive player for others to come want. He's got to lure people in. So I don't think he's going to do anything crazy. But if you're the Philadelphia 76ers, you have got to get James Harden out of there. I said this yesterday at the end of the show. Even if it's for 75 cents on the dollar, you can't have him there because then what you're going to do is you're going to risk angering Joel Embiid. And he still, while coming up short so far in the postseason, is your meal ticket. You want Joel Embiid, who's the MVP, get rid of James Harden sooner than later, by October 25th. So I was, yeah, I was thinking, like, why, you know, why would James Harden report to camp? And the obvious answer is money, but the 76ers have been paying him. Yeah. And they have never said publicly that they're going to dock him. So the other reason would be to show interested buyers yes. what I look like. Yes. And, and you can see I still play basketball. But I will say this. If Wojnarowski is right and he is just there to be a thorn in the side that is small and petty and yeah. counterproductive yeah. and it will make him unattractive like Kyrie Irving. It will. People will say, I, I don't want this guy. I don't have any idea, Mike, and I'm sure you don't either, why the 76ers would even contemplate 
having him on the squad. He has said of Daryl Morey, the general manager, he's a liar, a liar. and I'll never play for Did him. Multiple times. You know, and I'll never play for him. Yeah. And if this was if this was a private matter between the two of them, maybe they could work it out. But it's very public, and it feels like there's no way out. It just feels like there's no way out. So the only thing I can think of now, it would be as you and I would agree, it's better for everybody if Harden is traded. But maybe Maury's angry that it would actually be better for Harden, and he doesn't want that to well, happen. Well, Tony, to I, that, I know Daryl Morey a little bit, and that sort of thing. That, that's just not him. And okay, Tony, they're going to want to pursue a championship in Philadelphia, and while Milwaukee and Boston are having an arms race, right, and stockpiling assets, the 76ers are trying to offload some dude who is called the president of Ops a liar multiple times yeah. publicly. You can't yeah. win with James Harden. They got to know right. that. And then B, who's been I playing think... nice at press conferences, and B, Joel Embiid has been a great teammate. He can't, in his heart well, of hearts, he, want to he start the season with Ben with Simmons. Harden. So it's nice well, that he's a good Simmons, teammate with James get, get Harden. Him out too. Let's take a break. Coming up, your boy Sean Payton is about to face the coach he criticized this summer, mm. Nathaniel Hackett. How do you mm. think that's going to go? And C.J. Stroud is off to a great start, but is Baker Mayfield, Tony's boy? We're likely to like keep him. playing at a high, high, high level. So what, what did you set the deadline at? October 25th? That's the opening night. Why not tomorrow 24th. at 2? 24th is opening night. 25th for us here. Why not tomorrow at 2 so we can leave the show with it? <laughs> I mean, pardon the interruption. To pardon the interruption. Presented by Truly Hard Seltzer. Part of Happy Hour. It's time for toss-up. Two men enter, one man leaves, finishes the show, then wonders why he prepared so much for something that aired on ESPN2. What's first? Toss-up. Whose offense do you expect more from this Sunday? Nathaniel Hackett's or Sean Payton's? Okay. The Jets have no offense. They have no offense. They are saved by the fact that Denver has no defense. Denver has given up the most points in the league so far, 150. They gave up 70 to Miami. Last week, they made Justin Fields look like Johnny Unitas. They really did. Um, so Denver has a pretty good offense, but the Jets have a pretty good defense. That's not the story of this game, Mike. The story of this game is will Sean Payton have enough moxie and have enough understanding to walk across the field at some point and try to shake Nathaniel Hackett's hand and apologize for the terrible things he said about Nathaniel Hackett's coaching and if that happens will Nathaniel Hackett have enough grace and charm to extend his hand as well because other than that I don't really care about two bad one and three teams everything Sean Payton said about Hackett you're right it was terrible it was also true every it was true. word it was is true it. But let me tell yes, you what the was. only thing I care about you talking about what you care about the handshake let me tell you what I care about sat here last year and you mocked me because I told you week after week after week when Nathaniel Hackett was hacking it up in Denver that if you got a good right. coach and you wound up getting Sean Payton, that Russ would come back. What is that stupid phrase? Let's, let Russ eat or let him cook or let, let him, him do eat. something? No, let him let cook. Let him cook. Okay. Let him cook. Let me and just say this hungry, to end this segment. Let him eat. Russell right. Wilson is the third rated passer in the NFL as of today. I told you he could come back I mean, under his new yeah. coach and Sean Payton I think we both would knew find that. him a worthy what? reclamation. Where's the apology? I think we both knew that. Where is the what? Will we Bond, both... you were right. That's what uh, I want to hear. Will Bond, to this point, you were right. To this, to this point, point <laughs> you were right. And somebody else on the show was Let wrong. him eat. I think it could have been let maybe him cook. Frank. Let him it's cook. let him cook. Okay. That's next. Toss-up, right. more likely to keep up his surprising play. C.J. Stroud or Baker Mayfield? Stroud's been great. He doesn't have any interceptions. He's thrown for over 1,200 yards. He does not have any interceptions. He is by far the best rookie quarterback to this point, right? And he, yes. and he gets, I think he sort of gets a break yes. in that they're playing Atlanta this week, and they're not world beaters. But to me, Baker Mayfield has been a total surprise, and I'm going to compare him a little bit to Stroud. Baker Mayfield, who was left for dead, by both the Carolina Panthers and the Los Angeles Rams last year, is completing passes at 69.6% of his passes. That's much higher than Stroud. He's been sacked four times. Stroud has been sacked 
11 times. He's got a higher QBR and a higher rating than Stroud. And his team is 3-1 and one and Stroud is 2-2. Two and two. They'll both have been very, very good. The next game that Mayfield plays is against the Lions. That's a tough one, but it's not this week. It's next week. So this week, I'm going to be able to just say Baker Mayfield's been terrific ah, so far. I'm going to make one analogy. I'm going to go back almost, I don't know, 20 years, about more than 20 years, and compare Baker Mayfield in this, his sixth season. Tony, to have a great couple of seasons doesn't mean you have to have all of them be great. It doesn't mean you're going to be a Hall of Famer. But you can, you can find your stride, and maybe Baker Mayfield, like Trent Dilfer, Trent Dilfer mm -hmm. did this in his seventh season. And he led a team to the Super Bowl. Can you can say that Warren Sapp and that defense did that, and you'd be right. Well, Barber, yeah, the defense had something to do with it. And all those guys in the yeah. Hall of Fame linebacker. Yeah, yeah they, they had. So, but, 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 but Trent Dilfer was, was, was riding that thing, and he, they won a Super Bowl with him in his seventh season. Maybe Baker yeah. Mayfield's got a late-blooming season in him like that now in his sixth season. We'll see. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah. It's, it's hard. It's, it's early. That's it. Let's take one last break, but still to come. Urban Meyer addresses the rumors that link him with Michigan State. Hadn't heard those. And Terry Francona officially says so long to managing in Cleveland. Love I Francona. think the phrase might be let Russ dress or let Russ drive. I know it's not let Russ eat. I don't know why you're fixated I don't on let know. Russ eat. eat. Happy time, people. Happy 43rd birthday, James Jones. For those who don't know, Jones is the general manager of the Phoenix Suns, and he has been busy lately. In February, he brought in Kevin Durant, which somebody on this show said would get Phoenix the championship. In June, Jones traded away Chris Paul, brought in Bradley Beal from Washington. In September, Jones traded away recent number one overall pick, DeAndre Ayton, brought in Yusuf Nurkic from Portland, Grayson Allen from Milwaukee. The great holdover player on Phoenix is Devin Booker. Beyond him, there appear to be a lot of spare parts. And Jones, who played 14 years in the league and won three championships with LeBron, then hired Frank Vogel to make all this work. Tony, you didn't name the principals in this season for Phoenix, no question. But you know what? Nobby, Josh Kogi, Eric Gordon, Bo Bo, Nasir Little, that bench is totally no. underrated and being slept on. And James Jones did a great job with the new owner of court, of course, Matt Ishbia. And putting that group Spear together, parts. the Suns are going to be deep and good at it. Watch. Happy anniversary, Jared Goff. On this day nine years ago, the Cal Berkeley quarterback threw for 527 yards and five touchdowns to lead Cal past Washington State in a 60-59 to shootout. Goff had eight college games where he threw for over 450 yards, including one where he got 542. He has seven of the top ten passing yardage games in Cal history. Goff's numbers led the Rams to draft him number one overall in 2016 draft. Eventually, they traded Goff to Detroit for Matthew Stafford, which helped the Rams win the Super Bowl and tarnish Goff somewhat. But he's been sneaky good in Detroit. Really Mike. good. The Lions are 11-3 in Goff's yeah. last 14 games. Made the Pro Bowl last year, and he recently threw 383 passes without being intercepted. I root for Goff, Tony. And by the way, that season, he did not have one of those 400 and whatever yard games against Northwestern. We held him to 281, I think, in the opener in Evanston after we had beaten him and Cal the previous year, but he yeah. won the rematch. But I like, I like him, and I root for him. Good. Happy trails to managing for Terry Francona. The longtime Guardians manager has officially stepped down from the job he started 11 seasons ago. Francona has battled serious medical issues over the past few years, said that he's recently found himself not being as eager to tackle the things that have made him such a success in the past. Francona is the winningest manager in team history, 13th on the all-time wins list between Casey Stengel and Leo DeRocher. He's got a front office <clears> job <throat> in Cleveland ahead of him, says he doesn't foresee managing again on a personal note. Terry Francona has been one of our favorite recurring guests. Amen. Going back to his days as Red Sox manager, smart, candid, self-deprecating, unashamedly bald. We thank Terry Francona. We wish him our best. We do, and I would hope that some television executives, plural, would say, you know what? This guy would be so great covering baseball, talking baseball, broadcasting, commenting on in whatever capacity. Let's get Terry Francona and maybe they can pry him out of that front office job. And Terry, there's a lot more golf to be played in Arizona if you're just on TV. Everybody goes to Arizona, Terry. Everybody. Come Wilma on out. Everybody in Arizona. Come on out. Bowl, bowl. 
One era, yeah, Bo it's Will Bo Bonds. Trent Dilfer won the Super Bowl with Ray Lewis and the Ravens, not Derek Brooks, yeah. Warren Sapp, and the yeah, Bucks. Defense. That was Brad Johnson. Oops. We move on to the big finish. Let's do it. The 2030 World Cup will be played, <clears throat> excuse me, primarily in Morocco, Spain, and Portugal, but opening games in Uruguay, Paraguay, and Argentina. Is this all right with you? Make up your mind about what your purposes are. Put them in one spot. Enough. There's too many, too many places. Stop. The Broncos are planning to release pass rusher Randy Gregory if they can't find a trade partner. Makes sense? No, their defense stinks now. Why would they get rid of it? No, no. Urban Meyer told Bruce Feldman there's zero truth to him being a candidate for the Michigan State job. Your thoughts? I mean, if you say zero truth, I mean, Urban Meyer can go a lot of places. A lot of people still would want him. I'm going to take him at his word. Lexi Thompson plans to play in a men's tour event in Vegas next week. You excited for that? No, I'm not. I was excited when Annika Sorenstam played one, and, and I thought that ended it for me. So, no, I'm really not. Last one. Cooper Cup cleared to return to practice for the Rams. Is that significant? They got this guy, Nakua, who's like Cooper Cup, right? He catches a million balls a week. With the two of them out there, maybe that'll be quite a threat, Tony. We're out of time. Trying to do better the next time. I'm Tony Kornheiser. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, knuckleheads. You can get the PTI podcast on the ESPN app or Apple podcast. Bowl, bowl. You're sleeping on bowl, bowl. You're going to regret it. It's like let Russ eat or let him cook. Let bowl, <laughs> let bowl cook. cook. Huh? Not sleeping Here's on bowl, center. bowl. PTI.